Hello friends, now today we are going to see the topic that is instantaneous center of rotation. So, what do you mean by instantaneous center of rotation? This instantaneous center of rotation is based basically based on the concept that if a rigid body it is moving, then the points which we are locating by the for that ICR will be same or different. Means it will be equivalent to the movement of that body about a fixed center in a space or in a plane. And this ICR points, it basically changes from instant, means it is not constant from with respect to time. And whatever the ICR points we are locating or we are getting, the locus of such ICR points, they are called as centrums. So now here we will see the basic concept of ICR. Here, we are going to learn a technique of velocity analysis called the instantaneous center method. This is based on the fact that the planar motion of a rigid body at any given instance can be mod modeled as a pure rotation. Like every rotation, this too will have its center or an axis, but it might change or shift the next moment and therefore it is called as the instantaneous center. Now let us see how to find this instantaneous center. And for that, we are going to look at this rigid body given to us here. We have been given two points in the rigid body and we know the velocity of point A completely. And we know the direction in which B is moving. Uh, we don't even know the sense, whether it is moving downward like this or upward like that. But this information is sufficient for finding the instantaneous center. Since the body is rotating at this moment, then every point in this body must be moving along a circular arc, at least in the vicinity of its current position. And since the velocity is always tangential to the path, this velocity indicates the tangent to that arc. So we can drop a perpendicular to this tangent so that we get the radius and the radius would point to the center. So here is our first pointer to the center. We don't know where it is, but it must be somewhere on this line. Next, we do the same at point B. We drop a perpendicular and wherever these two perpendiculars intersect, that must be the instantaneous center. Once we get the instantaneous center, we can find the angular velocity of the body because in circular motion, velocity is given by r, the distance of a point from the center into omega. So knowing the velocity, we can find the omega. And once we know this instantaneous center and omega, then finding the magnitude of velocity and direction of velocity of any other point is easy. To find the velocity of say this point b, we take the distance i b, from the instantaneous center to the point and multiply it with the omega that we just found. Next, we are going to apply this technique to two bodies. So here are two rigid bodies. And like before, we have been given velocities of two points in each of these bodies. Using them, we do the construction that we did before and we find the instantaneous center of each of this body. So these are the instantaneous centers and we also know their angular velocities. Having found the instantaneous centers, we can do away with this initial data and connect the two instantaneous centers with a line. So here is the instantaneous center of the red body and that of the green body connected with a line. We can consider this line as a part of one of the bodies, like say the red body here. And then the velocity of points on this line would vary like this. We could have done it the other way too. We could have considered that line as a part of the green body and then the velocity of points on that line would have varied like this. If we superpose these two velocity distributions, then there is going to be one point where the velocity will be the same, whether it is part of the red or part of the green body. And that point is a common point between these two bodies. 
it is common from the point of view of velocities whether it is considered a part of red or the green body it will have the same velocity same direction same magnitude and the same sense in fact we can drive a nail through this common point c passing through both the bodies and at least for a moment it will not be torn apart because at that point both the bodies are moving in the same direction with the same speed this is what an observer external to both the bodies would see we are going to see an interesting application of this point c the common point in the next video to recap the planar motion of a rigid body can be considered as pure rotation at any given instance and at that instance it will have a center called the instantaneous center when we have two bodies then we can find their instantaneous centers and on the line joining those centers we find a point whose velocity is the same whether it is part of one body or the other okay so this was the basic concept of the instantaneous center of rotation now the instantaneous center of rotation how it is been calculated for the any given mechanism so basic formula is icr is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 where n is nothing but the number of planes present in the given mechanism so here the types of icrs are as follows so first is fixed instantaneous center of rotation second is permanent icr and third is neither fixed nor permanent icr now how these icrs we are going to locate in the mechanism we will see in the next slide so this is the basic four-bar chain mechanism in which your link number one is fixed second link is the drag third link is the coupler and last link is the rocker so as there are three types of icr so initially fixed icr and permanent icr can be directly located in the mechanism so here if you see this link number a and this is link number one that is a and d it is fixed so this icr 14 and icr 12 is nothing but the fixed icr and icr 34 and icr 23 is the permanent icr now here as per the calculation of formula as we are having four number of links so four into three that is 12 by two so it will be six so out of the six icrs here now we have just located four so remaining two icrs they are means how we are going to get that remaining icr so for that purpose you have to see this circle diagram so initially you have to draw one circle and on that circle you have to give the points now suppose for the four bar chain mechanism as we are having four links so here there will be four points one two three and four so initially fixed and permanent icr we have located by seeing the mechanism so here we are joining these points such as one four then three four then two three and one two and then afterwards only remaining icrs they are one three and two four so this is one three and this is two four now how this one three and two four icr we are going to locate so first of all this icr one three and two four these icrs are called as neither fixed nor permanent icr okay and now suppose if you want to locate the icr one three so here you have to first of all join this one point to three point by the dotted line then you will get two triangles such as three two one and second triangle is one four three so here one side is two three another side is one two so this is one two and two three so through this line through this link length you have to just plot the one dotted line the locus of that one three then next is side three four and one four so here this is one four and this is three four so through this line this through this link you have to draw another locus line of one three so both of these lines they are going to meet at one point that point is nothing but icr one three similarly the eyes for the icr two four same two triangles similar triangles that is two one four and two three four so one two and one four so this is one two and one four and then next is two three and three four so this is two three and three four so through this line through this link line you have to draw that locus line so that they will meet at one this common point this point is nothing but the icr two four so in this way you can directly get the neither fixed nor permanent icr 
So now what is Kennedy's theorem? So this Kennedy's theorem states that when any two or more relative bodies they are having motion with respect to each other, then their ICRs they lie on one straight line. So here, if you see, there are three links are there. Now suppose this is the first link is what here one number it is given as fixed link. Second link is the rotary link, and third is this link binary link. So here, first ICR is one two. Then second is what here it is one three, and now two three is located here. So if you see one three, one two, and two three, so these all three ICRs they are lying on one straight line. So this is basically the Kennedy's theorem that states that if the two or more bodies there are in relative motion with respect to each other, then their ICRs locate on one straight line. Now we will see the numerical on ICR. In this numerical problem, we'll be using instantaneous centers to do velocity analysis of this six bar mechanism. We have been given all the link lengths and angles so that we can plot a space or configuration diagram to scale. Additionally, we know the angular velocity of crank OA. We begin by numbering links one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we start locating the instantaneous centers that we readily know. For example, the instantaneous center 2, 3 is a pin connecting 3 and 2. The instantaneous center 3, 4 is a pin connecting link 3 and link 4 and so on. Because we have 6 links here, we will have 15 instantaneous centers. The formula is the number of links n multiplied by n minus 1 divided by 2. So 6 into 5 divided by 2 is 15. To keep track of these, we will use a road map. This shows the links as points. So for six links, we have these six points and the instantaneous centers are lines connecting them. So instantaneous center of two, three here will be shown as a line two, three on the road map. So here are all the centers that we know now shown in the road map as well. Next, we find the instantaneous centers of the sliders, which will be at infinity on lines perpendicular to their guides like this. We have shown them in the road map over here, 1, 5 and 1, 6. You might notice that it has formed a quadrilateral now, 1, 2, 3, 5. Such quadrilaterals are very useful in finding more centers because we can apply Kennedy's theorem of three centers being collinear. It says that the center 2, 5 will lie on a line that connects the center 2, 3 and 5, 3. Similarly, it will also lie on a line that connects the center 1, 2 and center 1, 5. So we draw the two lines and wherever they intersect, we can locate center 2, 5. Similarly, we find the other uh, diagonal 1, 3 by connecting the centers 1, 2 and 2, 3 and another line connecting centers 1, 5 and 5, 3. Wherever those lines intersect, we get the center 1, 3. This has given us a new quadrilateral, say 1, 3, 4, 6 now. Its diagonal 1, 4 can be found in a similar manner. And finally, we have this quadrilateral now, whose diagonal 2, 4 can also be found. So we have all the centers that we would need for solving this problem. We are all set for calculations now. To find omega 3, we will apply the formula V is equal to R omega twice. First, we take this point I23, which is common to link two and three, treat it as a part of link two and find its linear velocity by R, the length of link two into omega of two. That's the numerator of this expression. Then we treat that point as a part of a link three and divide its linear velocity that we just found by its distance from the instantaneous center of link three. So now we are using V divided by R is equal to omega. Knowing the angular velocity of link three helps us find the linear velocity of this point three, five. Because this is situated on link three, its distance from link three's instantaneous center of rotation 
multiplied by omega of link 3 gives us its linear velocity. But that linear velocity will be the velocity of the entire slider because it is part of the slider as well. And the slider is in translation. So velocity of one point is velocity of all points on the slider. To find angular velocity omega 4, let's take point 2, 4. First, we treat it as part of link 2 and find its linear velocity using r into omega of 2. And then we divide that linear velocity by its distance from the instantaneous center of link 4. So v divided by r gives us omega. Then we use that omega, omega 4, and the center i14 and 46 over here to find the velocity of this slider. Since it is on link 4, its distance from link 4 center multiplied by link 4 omega would give us its velocity, which is nothing but the velocity of slider as well. Thank you.